Hello, Mr. Hutchison's class. I hope you're all doing well. This is Mrs. Eastman again, and I'm doing another one of my videos. So I was thinking that I would do one little video a week on kind of the mini lessons that go with that unit and week. And that way I can go over some material with you before I ask you to complete any worksheets online. If you have any questions about what I'm going over, please ask an adult at home. Your parents or somebody, they could probably could explain further, okay? So, we're working on Unit 4, Week 4, and these are some mini lessons. We're just kind of playing catch up this week. It's a transition week. Now, next week, all of Northwood second grade teachers are going to go to the same unit and the same lesson. So we have consistency throughout the building. So next week we're going to be jumping to Unit 5, Week 1. Okay, so this is Unit 4, Week 4, Mini Lessons, and these are some things we have to talk about. So I'm just going to start left and move right, and be good listeners out there, alright? The first thing I want to talk about are abbreviations. Now, abbreviations are used to shorten up a word. And I wrote some examples here. We use them all the time, but we need to talk about them. So the first one I have here, the word is doctor. But we know we can use an abbreviation for the word doctor. Now, when you do abbreviations, you need to put a capital letter and then a lowercase letter, and then a period. Some of them actually have three letters. But we need a capital at the beginning, we need a period at the end. So I will show you these. For doctor, we put capital D, lowercase r. For street, we put capital S, lowercase t. And both of these have periods. For mister, we put a capital M and a lowercase r and a period. For Mrs., I'm not sure that's how you spell it, I think, but this is how we usually write it. A capital M and then a lowercase r and s and a period. And then Avenue, and you spell it with a capital A, a lowercase b, and a lowercase e and a period. There are many more abbreviations than this, but I just wanted to give you an example. For instance, I live on a street that's Molar Drive, and Drive is spelled with a capital D, a lowercase, well, abbreviated, with a capital D, a lowercase r, and a period. So, talk about abbreviations with your parents, all right? Remember, it's a way of shortening a word, and we always put a capital letter, and then lowercase letters, and then a period. All right? Let's go to Bossy R. This week, and you will see it on some of your worksheets, um, we're talking about E-E-R, E-R-E, -E, and E-A-R. Now, like I said in the Bossy R video, when we have two vowels, when we have a vowel team, they're stronger than Bossy R. So here we have E-E-R. So we actually get to hear E, ear, ear. So we hear ear in steer and in deer. And this kind of deer is an animal, D-E-E-R. When we have silent E, like in E-R-E, -E, the silent E is stronger than bossy R. So the first E is allowed to say its sound. And so this says ear, like in hear and sincere. And then our final way to spell ear is E-A-R, ear. And that has the vowel team E-A. So we hear the E, the A is silent, ear. And that really is a word, like your ear. And here are words that have that in it. We have ear and we have deer. And this kind of dear you would use like when you write a letter, dear grandma. All right, I want to tell you this dear and this dear are called homophones. Homophones sound the same. If you close your eyes and say dear, 
deer, they sound exactly the same, but they're spelled differently and they mean something different. As I said, this deer is an animal that you might see outside in the woods, and this deer is something we say, oh, she's such a deer. All right? Next thing, irregular verbs. So verbs are action words. They show action. All right? And I wrote some up here as examples, like come, run, hide, sing, give. Those are action words. You can say whisper. You can say read. You can say jog. They're all in action, even if they're a quiet action or a fast action. Sleep. All right? Now, we have them in present tense when they're happening now. So, like, I run around the block. It's happening now. When we take a verb and we put it into past tense, like it happened yesterday or last week or a month ago, okay, we usually add ed. But that's with regular verbs. These are irregular verbs, so they change completely. We don't say, if I want to go from come to the past tense, I don't say comed. Okay, I say came. So, for instance, um, my friend came to visit me last month. I don't say cumid. That sounds silly. A lot of times it's just what we're used to hearing and we know what's right and what's wrong because of our verbal language. So, present tense is come, past tense is came. Present tense is run, past tense is ran. All right, I, well, do I have it down here? I do, I'm not gonna jump to there. Present tense is hide. I will hide in the house. And past tense is hid. I hid in the house yesterday. I probably shouldn't have said will. I hide in the house, I hid in the house, all right? Sing goes to sing, give goes to gave. All right, so I have some sentences down here. Some children sing songs. Do you know what the verb is or the action word in that sentence is? Can you tell me? It's sing, that's the action. And that's happening now, okay? If I wanted to change that to past tense, like it happened yesterday or a year ago, I would say some children sang songs. We don't say singed, that would sound goofy. Some children singed songs, no. It would be some children sang songs. All right, next one. Many families come to the show. Do you know what the verb is there? Right, it's come. Many families come to the show. But if I want to make this happen in the past, I would change come, right up here, to came. Many families came to the show. All right, so let's practice filling in these two sentences. You do it at home and I'll tell you the answer after you do it. Today I blank a race. Can you find a word up here that would make sense in there? Today I blank a race and is in present tense because it's happening today. All right, it's run, R-U-N. Do you want me to put that in there? Here, I will grab my blue marker this time. R-U-N. Today I run a race. But yesterday, I blank a race. So what's the past tense of run? Right, it's ran. R-A-N. I ran a race. This is in present tense. This is in past tense. We do not say today, I runned a race. 
That sounds goofy again. So we don't add an ED there. Instead, the whole word changes from run to ran. And we call those irregular verbs. Okay? If you have any questions, talk to uh, somebody at home. Let's move on over here. Root and base words. All right. A root word or a base word is a word that can stand on its own and it has meaning. So over here, I wrote some words. I have the word thoughtful. Our base word here is thought. All right? Thought. That's a word. We know what that means. I've also added a suffix onto the end. A suffix is a group of letters that cannot stand on its own, but we can put them on the end of a base or root word and they change the meaning. So, I put F-U-L. Now, sometimes my kids get confused and they say, full, that's a word. But remember, full, like I ate too much and I'm full, actually has two L's. So this is not a word on its own. It's a suffix. And we're going to add it to the end of the base word. And it means full of thought. So if you're thoughtful and you do something kind for somebody, you're full of thought. All right? So let's go here. This one is helpful. Our base word or our root word is help. We know what that means. And I've added the suffix full, F-U-L. Not a word on its own, but I could put it at the end of a base or root word. And that means full of help. If you're helpful, you're full of help. Maybe you're doing more chores around the house. I hope so. All right, here's the word careful. The base word or the root word is care. We know what that means. And our suffix here is full. Careful, you're full of care. So when you're doing something and you need to be careful doing it, whether you're cooking on the stove and you don't want to burn yourself, you're full of care when you're doing that. You're paying attention, all right? You're taking your time, you're being careful. So when we add full, it just means full of something. And we can put it on the end. Now root word and base word in your reading book means the same thing. I was taught they were a little different, but I'm going to go with this for now, okay? Look again. Now, here's thoughtful. I have thoughtless. Our base word here is thought. Our suffix is less. All right? Now, when we add less to a base word or a root word, it means without. So if you are thoughtless, you are without thought. You're kind of acting without thinking first. You might be hurting somebody's feelings. We don't want to do that. We want to be thoughtful, not thoughtless. All right, here we go. This word is helpless. Here's the word help. That is our root or base word. And the suffix is less. And that means without help. If you're helpless, you're without help. We don't want to be that either. We want to be helpful, not helpless. We don't want to be like, Mom, I can't clean my room by myself. I need your help. I'm helpless. No. No way. We want to be helpful. We want to be independent and be helpful and not helpless. All right. Last word. Careless. The base word is care, which we know what that means. And the suffix here is less care less without care. So we don't want to carelessly color a picture. We don't want to be careless when we cook and we're boiling water on the stove or we might get burnt. We want to be careful, not careless without care. All right? So in this little lesson, you just need to know we have base words, we can add suffixes onto the end, and the suffixes change the meaning. All right? going on. The last thing I want to talk about is theme. And that's more of a concept this week. And that's a little tricky. A theme is when you read a story, what is the author's message in that story? What is the meaning of the story? What is the author trying to get through to you? 
and a lot of times you kind of have to dig deep and read between the lines to figure it out, all right? So in the one story, um, it's called Why the Sun and Moon Live in the Sky. That theme is just about friendship. And you can go back and try to figure it out by seeing what the, author, what the characters say and what they do, because the sun and the moon want to invite water over. And so they enlarge their house so he can come. Now they also kind of learn a little lesson in it that it didn't work out so great and they had to head up to the sky. So, but I think in our book it says the theme there is friendship. Um, there's another story, I don't know if I'm going to have you read it this week or not, but it's called How the Beetle Got Her Colors. And in that, it's like a play, and in that one, some other animals are making fun of Beetle because Beetle isn't very colorful, Beetle's just kind of brown. And um, they end up having a race, and Beetle, well maybe I shouldn't tell you because it'll ruin the story. Beetle ends up doing very well, and Beetle gets all these bright colors. but. Yeah, and sometimes, like, um, almost with fables, I mean, that's a folk tale, I believe, but there's a lesson to be learned. And the lesson there is, you know, don't make fun of other people. Be kind. All right? So, I hope this helped you. Um, now, when you do some of the worksheets that I might assign, you'll understand what we're doing. And if you need to have anything... Um, if you have other questions, need things clarified, you can ask somebody at home and they'll be able to go a little further with what I did here. All right? And remember, next week we're going to be jumping to Unit 5, Week five, week 1, like all of the other second grade teachers. And we're going to see if this works. If I can put this all in one video, like one time a week, and it covers everything we kind of have to learn in that week, then that'll work out great. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for participating. Bye.